project, I started with a 28 by 18 inch window that I had picked up at a garage sale. It had a little bit of painting on each side of the front that I decided to go ahead and keep. I thought it looked real pretty. Then I flipped it over and cleaned up the back. And then there was an area that didn't have any old caulk and I just took clear Elmer's glue and put it right along um, the edge there just to prevent any resin leaks. Now this area has a bunch of old caulk, which I really should have probably pulled out of there, but what I did to clean it up was just put a little bit more uh, bright white caulk right over the old caulk to kind of clean it up and look make it look a little bit better. Then I took some bright white paint and just kind of went along the perimeter of the frame just to brighten it up a little bit, but I did not totally cover it because I do like the distressed old window look. Next, I took some stained glass and cut out some patterns for three flower pots. I uh, cut them out, traced it out, and then used my stained glass cutter to cut each of the pieces out. Now, I am not an expert stained glass cutter, but I can cut out some simple patterns, and I did learn to do this just by watching YouTube videos. So if you're interested um, in learning how to cut stained glass, YouTube videos are a great way to learn, and it's free. Some of the edges didn't come out as smooth as I wanted them, so I took them outside. I have a glass grinder, and I um, kind of smoothed off the edges in that way. And when you're using this glass grinder, you really need to be wearing some safety glasses. So for this project, besides using the stained glass, I'm using four other types of glass. This first glass is actually tempered glass. It's a boat windshield that was broken up and I actually tumbled it and it came out this beautiful blue and I sprayed it with this cornflower blue Krylon stained glass spray paint and it came out this real pretty color. And I don't have any problem with the uh, Krylon spray paints holding the color um, like I'm starting to find out with the alcohol ink. Next I'm using this tumbled clear glass and these are the teeny tiny pieces, I call them glass crumbs, from the broken clear glass that I've tumbled. And then I'm taking canary yellow Krylon stained glass spray paint and spraying it. And when you spray spray paint, you should do it in a well ventilated area and wear some kind of a mask and it comes out this beautiful yellow. Now it does take about five coats. So I did spray it about three times on one side and flipped it over and it came out to this beautiful color yellow and um, it really is pretty. Pretty and shiny and translucent. And I do have a whole video on all the different Krylon stained glass and sea glass spray paints and what the different colors look like sprayed on clear glass. The next glass I used is Ashland Decorative Filler. I picked this up at Michael's. It's a crushed glass and it's a very light purple. And I used alcohol ink to dye this glass to get it to this beautiful dark color. So I just took it and took, I don't know, maybe five or six drops of alcohol ink and mixed it all up and then poured it out on some cardboard and spread it out and let it dry overnight. And the last glass I used is called vitrograph glass. It comes in long strands like that, and they usually sell it by the ounce. Four ounces get you a good-sized bag of vitrograph glass and all sorts of colors. And what I did was took the green glass and broke off just the straight pieces of it to make some stems for some flowers I'm going to be making. So I started by putting the flower pots on the glass and I did measure because I do have problems with centering things correctly. And then next I took the tempered glass that was the boat windshield that I had spray painted with the cornflower blue Krylon sea glass spray paint and put it in this paper. It helped direct uh, the glass and um, made little flowers out of it. And a trick is to use little pieces of tape to get unwanted things out of your flowers to keep from disrupting the glass too much. Anyway, when I was done making my flowers and straightening them out, then I took this Dollar Tree 
green glass that I've talked about many times before and I kind of filled in in between all of the flowers. After I was done putting all the green glass on I started messing around with different beads and I ended up using the gold beads for the center. Then I started putting the yellow glass on that was spray painted with the Krylon Canary Yellow stained glass spray paint and made little flowers with it. And I also used the gold beads uh, in the center of the yellow ones, the same as what I used for the center of the blue ones. And then again, I took the um, Dollar Tree glass and just kind of filled in lightly around the yellow flowers. Next I took the vitrograph glass and I used a little of the clear Elmer's glue and put it on the back of it with my finger and set each piece down where I wanted them and then let them dry for a couple hours. Next I took the Ashland decorative filler that I had dyed with uh, the alcohol ink and I put it in a piece of folded paper so that I could better direct the glass to make the lavender stems or the lavender and um, I actually ended up taking some of those green stems off before I finished because it was just too many. They were just too close together and too many. Next, I was ready for the resin. I took the flower pots off, and the reason I did that was because if you leave them on and pour the resin over it, a lot of times air gets trapped underneath, and then you end up with big air bubbles coming out after. So um, what I did was I went ahead and poured the, drizzled the um, resin over the glass and then I went ahead and put the resin at the bottom where the flower pots would go and then put the flower pots back on top of the resin to help prevent too many bubbles. Then I went around with a toothpick and kind of straightened everything out and got any Thing that wasn't supposed to be in there out and also used my little kitchen torch to get any uh, bubbles out. Needs to sit on a level flat surface overnight and it's in your best interest to put a dust cover on it. It should be at temperatures between 72 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And then I put seven little bumblebees on there. Hey everyone. <laughs> So I have a piece of paper behind it so that you can uh, see it better. Oops, it bent down. Um, so this could easily be hung in a window, but this shows you just, if this is what it would look like if it was hanging on a wall. And look at the colors are so pretty and bright. I love the colors on this. Now this is what it would look like if it was hanging in a window and you could hang it in a window. I'll show you the back of it. The back of it looks pretty too. So you'd have to hook something up here, but you could hang that in a window. But anyway, um, so I used so many different types of glass on this. I hope I didn't confuse y'all. Um, but I mean, you can use, in place of that Dollar Tree green glass, you can just smash up some green glass and sprinkle it in between the flowers and you would get the exact same effect. Um, you know, different colors of green glass. And uh, a lot of this other glass, like, well, these pots, the stained glass, if you don't cut stained glass or don't want to cut stained glass, you could make it out of glass or you could actually paint the pots on there too. A lot of people do painting on uh, glass and that would look just as pretty. And, you know, you could do these individual ones instead of doing it on a big window. You could do, um, if you wanted to just try it, you could do one on a, uh, on a regular uh, picture frame. Just do one of these. Uh, you could do it on a canvas. You could do it with Mod Podge. Um, the, the thing I like most about this is I love those little bumblebees. I don't know, can you see the bumblebees? I got those on Amazon, they're so cute. There was 20 of them for like nine bucks. I just thought they were adorable. I thought they just kind of finished the project with all those little bumblebees on there. Anyway. I hope I hope you guys enjoyed it. I love to hear from you. If you have any questions, I love to see what everybody's making. Um, my email is under um, my about information. And um, I just wanted to show you a couple of my garage sale finds. So, um, you know, the weirdest thing is, 
I, for some reason, I thought this said 10 cents on it and I gave the lady a dime for it and I just pulled it out of my trunk today and it says a dollar. I don't know, unless I'm thinking of something I got the week before. But anyway, that's a pretty orangey uh, amber vase. Um, I did pay a dollar for this. I usually don't, I have so many frames I hate to, but uh, I like square frames and um, it's really hard to find square frames at a decent price. So I did pay a buck for that. And I found this really cool oval frame. It's a real old one. And um, they had a dollar on it. I offered them 50 cents because it's in such poor condition. But, um, you know, that'll paint up nice. But look at this glass. I'm going to take this glass out and put a mirror in it. But it almost looks like the glass is melted. And look at the back of it. It looks like a really old, old frame. You can see how it's pieced together. Yeah. So, um, anyway, yeah, I'm going to, so this will be a future, I'm going to do this, um, pretty soon, put a mirror in that and do some glass art on it. And then I got, um, I paid 50 cents for this bowl and honestly, they probably would have thrown it out if uh, I hadn't paid for it. But this is a, bit, a nice bowl, but you see the crack in it. I mean, who's gonna want it with a crack in it? Except for me. <laughs> but now here's another example of glass that can be deceptive. You think that the glass is this color all the way through. Um, and you can see that how it's clear. So this is glass that you could use for a broken glass art project, but you can't tumble it because it would just turn out clear. You could tumble it, but it would be clear. So, um, and then I got these two frames for 50 cents each. I thought they were real pretty. I was gonna try to do a little flower or something in them. And, uh, and then this, this was a good find, a big piece of, this is green glass, uh, a great big jug for, it's filthy, uh, but I'm gonna tumble it, smash it up and tumble it uh, for a dollar. And then I got these uh, pieces of jewelry I thought would be really pretty for Three for a dollar. So there, look how big that is. That. These are earrings, seashell earrings, so I thought that would be good in some coastal project. And then, this is actually a ring, but of course I'll pull it apart. Look at the stones in that. I thought that would look real pretty in the center of a flower or something. So, um, so anyway, <laughs> those were my, my, this, this week the garage sale finds weren't that great, but they were, they were still good. I still enjoy going no matter what. I hope you enjoyed the project. If you did, give it a thumbs up. It helps the channel. If you want to be notified of future videos, subscribe and you'll be notified. And I hope you all have a great day. Thanks for watching.